Welcome to this presentation. My name is Dr Jo Lane and I'm a clinical psychologist and research fellow at the Australian National University. Today I'm going to present to you on wellbeing during the COVID-19 pandemic. The information I'll present to you today is also in a fact sheet, so you might want to look at that to see that information. And I hope you find the information helpful. A lot of the information is quite intuitive and you may be doing some of these things already. I would like to acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians whose land on which we meet and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. This video has been made in good faith. Every reasonable attempt has been made to get reliable information that is based on evidence-based psychological research. It is a general video and it may not be relevant to your specific situation. It is not therapy or treatment and should be not used as a substitute for consulting a healthcare professional. If you do need help, please contact a healthcare professional and also consult your government or health department regarding the latest advice for COVID-19. The information I present today is based on best practice. It may not fit your current life at the moment, and that's okay. So just take whatever you find useful, depending on, on your situation. So one thing we can do to maintain our well-being during the pandemic is to notice and acknowledge our feelings. It's normal to feel sad or upset or distressed or grief at this time. Australians have never experienced anything like this. It's unprecedented. So it's okay to feel those things. And it's quite normal to want to avoid or ignore those feelings. It's very common. And in the short term, that might be quite functional and helpful. But in the longer term, research shows that avoiding emotions can be, have a negative impact on our psychological and physical well-being. So what can we do to notice our emotions? It's just noticing that they're there without trying to change them. So you might say, I'm feeling sad and I notice it in my chest and my head feels heavy. So you don't have to change it. It's just noticing it's there. Waves come and go. They're there to tell us that something's happening around us and they come and go like waves on the sand. Maintaining a routine is important. Now I know this might be difficult for you at this time. You might have lost your job, you might be working from home, you might have more caring responsibilities, you might have to homeschool your children. So of course take this the best way you can around your current lifestyle. But if you can, it's about maintaining a routine because our brain likes routine, we like structure, it gives us security and safety and it helps us to feel calm. It's an anchor point for us. So as much as you can, get up, have breakfast, have a shower, get dressed, exercise, do all the things you would normally do as much as you can. Some people find it helpful to schedule in activities. So if your timetable has changed quite a lot, schedule thing in, things in for the short term, just so that you can maintain a routine. Sleep is also really important. Adults need about eight hours of sleep a night, whereas children and adolescents need around 10 hours of sleep. Sleep and mood are closely linked and they go in both directions. So sleep helps with our mood and more sleep generally, the, the amount of sleep we have can help with our mood. And if we, we all know how irritable and cranky we can be if we don't get enough sleep. And also that can affect our relationships. But also low mood can impact our sleep. Research shows that insomniacs are at a greater risk of depression and anxiety than people in the general population. So what can you do to maintain your routine? Can you schedule in some activities to get a sense of having a routine? It's no surprise a health professional wants to talk about exercise and diet. We love talking about this. So exercise releases those happy, feel-good neurotransmitters in our brain. And all the endorphins, serotonin and dopamine. And that's why we feel great after exercise. Exercise also helps our physical well-being. It helps with things like concentration and mood and focus and it gives us energy. So it doesn't matter what type of exercise you want to do. If you can get outside, that's excellent. I know some people can't. But if you can get outside in the fresh air and the, sun, and the sunshine with spontaneity, that's great for our brain. 
But if you can't and you're stuck inside, that's absolutely fine. You can do some aerobics inside. A lot of gyms have online membership, so you can do that. If you don't have that for yourself, go find a friend that does and do a class with them. You must, might also wanna watch a Zumba class or something like that, or go to the old fashioned 80s or 90s classes on Oz aerobics and have a go at those. Of course, leotards are optional for those. If you don't wanna do any of those things, you can just use your body weight and do exercise at home. It doesn't matter how intense the exercise is, it just needs to be enough to get your heart rate up and your breathing rate up. So it's difficult to have a normal conversation. You can be as creative as you like. Diet is also important for our mood. A balanced diet helps to maintain our physical and emotional health. At the end of this video, I have some resources around sleep, exercise and diet, the Australian guidelines, if you'd like to look those up for more information. Doing things you enjoy is really important for our mood. It doesn't actually matter what that is for you. I'm sure you have your own activities that you do to enjoy. So if it's gardening or reading a book or playing an instrument, a lot of people have said during this pandemic that they have a lot more time. So what projects have you got that you haven't had time to do? So I'm sure most of us have a pile of books that we've got waiting to be read or maybe you've got a project in your cupboard that you started or never had the chance to start. So what project can you do now that you've got time for? I've also included at the end of this presentation, 170 things you can do to help improve your mood. So if you're kind of stuck and you're like, I'm not sure what I can do, go have a look at that list. And if you want, you can find a friend, look at the list together and say, let's do these two things today, or you choose two for today and I'll choose two for tomorrow. So you can be accountable for those things. So it's important to schedule in those things that you enjoy in your day. So as you see, a lot of these things are crossing over, which is true, they're all interconnected. Connecting with others is really important. Humans are social beings. Most of us love interacting with others. And we know this is difficult for now. So connect with others in any way that you find useful or possible. So the telephone or some video conferencing tool, or you might want to write a letter. Pen pals are making a resurgence. So connecting with others is important. If you can, connect with people that you enjoy and those that bring you pleasure. And maybe this is the time to restrict the amount of time you interact with those that might cause you anxiety or make you feel depressed. So just limit your time with people who make you your mood change or feel low at this time. So how you connect with others is up to you and you can be um, quite creative with this. I love the fact that some people, some older adults are saying I'm using Skype for the first time and they're Skyping their grandkids, for example. That is really cool. So there's lots of things you can do online. There's virtual tours that you can do of museums. So get a friend and say, let's tour this museum together. You can watch a movie together online. There's virtual choirs and pub choirs and bands that you can join. There's plenty of online groups. So there's groups for suburbs, there's groups for special interest groups, so gardening, book clubs. And if there's no group that interests you, maybe you can start one or create one. So there's plenty of things online that you can do to, to connect with others. Another thing you can do is think, who else might be feeling isolated at this time? Who else might be feeling disconnected? Maybe someone like you is living home alone, for example. So maybe you can contact them and see how they're going and say, hey, let's be COVID-19 buddies. Let's keep um, interacting with each other and checking with each other regularly just to see how we're both going. So connecting with others is important for our mood. Media and social media. I think most of us are pretty confident that media and social media is both a blessing and a curse. With media, it's really great to know what's happening. It's good to know what's happening in the media, but if it's making you feel distressed or sad or anxious, it may be time to limit how much media that you're watching or taking in. It might be a good time to go and do some of those activities in your pleasurable activities list. I was in a social isolation recently and I would have the, the news on in the background. And one thing I noticed was that the stories didn't really change during the day. So the same stories is played over and over again. I mean, sometimes there were press conferences and you can keep your eye out for those. 
but generally there's no real advantage in watching media all day. And if it makes your, your mood feel anxious or sad, it might be time for a time out. If you do want to look at media, go and find a reputable source. Social media is a bit of a blessing and a curse as well. Some people find it useful to restrict how much time they, find, they spend on social media. And we've all been there. You're, you know, want to be on Facebook, for example, for, an, for one hour, and then three hours later, you're still on Facebook. So restricting how much time you spend on social media might be helpful. It might also be helpful to hide some friends that keep posting things that might make you feel anxious or depressed at this time as well. With media and social media, scheduling it in might be helpful. Also, some people say that they don't like looking at it first thing in the morning or last thing at night. It just upsets their mood. So scheduling in a time that suits you might also be helpful. And people find that, you know, scheduling in a time, limiting how much time they have, controlling who they're interacting with is important. So how can you make your social media or media work better for you? Being kind to yourself and others. This is a difficult time for all of us. And one way you can notice how you're coping or how you're treating yourself is to just listen to yourself talk. How are you talking to yourself? Are you being critical and harsh or are you being gentle? So what self-care activities can you put into your day to help you be kind to yourself? So some people like to go for a walk, pat the dog, go for a bath whatever you find is a kind activity for you. And what is your self-talk like regarding your productivity at the moment? Is it okay to give yourself permission to say, I'm not as working as effective or productively as normal? And most of us aren't, we're working either from home or we've got other responsibilities. So one thing you might find helpful is just to reduce your expectations of yourself for now. And be kind to yourself, do something you find pleasurable. And that's also related to others. Your expectations for others, you might have to give yourself permission to let that go for a while. We don't know what other people are going through. We don't know what stresses they have. So giving yourself permission to be kind to yourself and to others is not only good for your short term, but also your long term relationships. Another thing you can do is just to take five deep breaths. If you're feeling anxious or tense, five deep breaths in and out can help re reduce our level of stress and anxiety. Maintaining perspective. At the start of this talk, I talked about emotions and how important it is to acknowledge and notice them. The same here is for the way we think or our thoughts. What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about the now or are you thinking about the past or are you thinking about the future? So if you're thinking about the past, you might be thinking about what should have happened or what, what I should have done. And if you get stuck on those things, we call that rumination. So where you're stuck on thinking about the past and what should have happened. Alternatively, most people probably during the COVID-19 pandemic are thinking about the future. What's gonna happen? Am I gonna lose my job? How am I gonna pay my bills? Is my family gonna be safe or am I gonna be safe? How is my health going to go? So if we get stuck on all that, those thoughts, and if we're you know, really getting stuck on them, sometimes we call that catastrophizing. So we're not in the now, we're in the past, or we're in the future. So one thing we can do to get in the now, in the present moment, is called mindfulness. So mindfulness is just noticing what's happening in the moment with openness and curiosity and without judgment. It's like taking a photograph of what's happening right now and being present with it. So one example is you might just say, what can I see? What can I feel? What can I touch, taste and smell? So you're just present and noticing. So you can do this while you're walking, while you're making a meal, while you're eating, while you're taking a shower, while you're doing Lego or a pleasurable activity, for example. It's just noticing what's happening in that moment without judgment and with openness and curiosity. Another thing we can do to maintain perspective is to have a gratitude journal. So some people say at the end of the day, they just write down five things that they're thankful for. And if you write down a family member or a friend, you might give them a call or a text to say, I'm thankful for you. So that's another thing we can do. 
One final thing we can do is just notice how people are changing and how resilient and how much we're adjusting. So that might mean like, have you changed your business model at work? Have you learned to work from home? Have you learned a new skill because of this COVID-19 pandemic? So focusing on how much you've adjusted and how resilient you are is another way to maintain your perspective. So are there any mindfulness activities you can try? So the next time you do an activity that you find pleasurable, can you just notice while you're doing it? Notice what's happening around you in that moment. What's happening with the COVID-19 pandemic is tragic and we're certainly not minimizing that. We do know that research shows that having a good laugh releases the same neurotransmitters in our brain as, as it does after exercise. So serotonin, dopamine, endorphins. So when we have a good laugh, we feel good. We also know that having a good laugh can help reduce our stress and it can help boost our immune system. So is there a sitcom you can watch or a favorite movie that really makes you have a good laugh? We also know that laughter can be contagious. So having a good laugh often can make us, you know, our friends have a good laugh with us. So is there a movie or something you can watch and invite a friend to watch to help improve your mood and help to maintain your perspective? So there are many organisations available to help with support at this time. So if you do feel you need support, I've listed some organisations here. So you can start with a trusted friend or family member or a healthcare professional, for example, like your GP and talk to them. There's also these support organisations that are there specifically to help you during this COVID-19 pandemic. They know people are anxious and unsettled and uncertain about the future. So they're there to help you and to have a chat and to give you some strategies. Of course, if you're in an emergency, please contact triple zero. I've also got some mental health resources there for you. There's some really nice fact sheets by mental health organisations, for example, Lifeline and Beyond Blue have some, and the Black Dog Institute and SANE Australia. I've also got some references for the Australian Guide to Healthy Eating and the Physical Activity and the Sleep Guidelines as well, if you'd like more information. And then there's the 170 fun activities to help improve your mood. So go check that out if you'd like some ideas. So thank you for listening to this video. If you need support, please reach out. There are people who are happy to talk to you and to get, give you the support you need at this time. I hope you found this video helpful and you got some useful tips. Please take care.